In this episode of Podcast Tactics, two podcasting veterans give tips and advice for launching and growing a show that seeks to support American Muslim moms and the unique issues they face in a post-9-11 world. I'm James, the host of Podcast Tactics. If you want to keep learning about podcasting, get inspired and stay motivated, join the mailing list at podcasttactics.com. Thanks for listening. Let's get into it. Joining me at the mic are Uzma and Zeba. Thank you so much for joining me. What's the name of your show and what's it all about? Our podcast is literally about parenting Muslim children in a post 9-11 um, America, and we're called Mommying While Muslim. It kind of came, the name came from Flying Wall Muslim, which is kind of what started the whole um, podcasting journey for us. And I was like, you know, it's like we're momming while Muslim. And then it kind of just stuck. Um, it, it started with a story um, that I, I was on a quest to find when my oldest son got um, racially profiled at the airport, feeling alone and stressed and not no, even knowing where to find the answers to questions that my son was asking, I went to my childhood friend, um, Dr. Osma Jaffrey, because she she was one of those that kind of knew where where to go and who to talk to. And I was called her the expert in all things Muslim. And she was like, why the heck are you not traveling with your ID? That's the first and foremost thing that you have to be doing. And, you know, uh, in our quest to find the answers, um, we decided there really wasn't um, a set platform for this support. And so mm -hmm. we decided to just start it on our own. And how long ago was that? That was, we're g coming up to two years now. I think March, okay. it was March of 2019, actually. Yeah, March so, yes, 19th is at, our two-year anniversary. Yes, but March 19th. The conversation started in 2018. Yes. Maybe even 2017, I think. It started in 2017, right? Because that was yeah. your trip that you you got stuck at the airport exactly. and then we spent the next year forgetting about it and getting mom busy and then <laughs> realizing, Hey, wait, we had something that we, there was something on the to-do list and we went back and we, we decided to check it off. So let's take a couple of steps back here. How do you guys know each other? Our dads were roommates back in the day. So we're children of immigrants. Okay. And in the early seventies, our dads landed in Chicago together and the Muslim community was tiny and kind of spread out all over the States. Um, Chicago was one of the major hubs for people coming from the South Asian, uh, the subcontinent of India. So that's where our dads hail from. And they were, you know, just kind of navigating this brand new world together and figuring out the culture together. And then they all ended up getting married and having babies together. Um, and so we are the second generation of that friendship. So you are lifelong friends then. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very yes, cool. we are. You know, that really comes across in your podcast as well. I, I did listen to an episode earlier today and, you know, I can definitely hear the the friendship there. Um, you guys interact with each other very well. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's it's uh, informative. Um, I'm not a mom. I'm a dad. But, you know, I mean, as a parent, I relate to, you know, many things that you guys are discussing there. Um, there's definite value in, you know, the show that you guys are putting together on many, many levels. Um, but before we start talking about your episode, I do want to kind of keep things a little high level. What kind of what kind of challenges do you guys have you guys been running into putting your podcast together over the last couple of years? And how have you broken through those challenges? I would say one of our big issues was tech. Mm -hmm. uh, tech and post-production were things that we had no idea how to do. Um, Zeba did the lion's share of research on how to do a podcast. I didn't even know what the heck they were when she first talked to me about them. So 2018 was me discovering two podcasts, finally realizing they were on my phones the whole time because I had never known how to access them. I was like, what? They're right here. This little purple thing does something. So I have an iPhone. Um, but then after that, you know, yeah, we can all record our voices, but there's so much involved in podcasting after in terms of what tech is the best tech to use. How do you make your sound quality good? Because we know we don't want to listen to a bad sounding podcast. So we wanted to make sure that we provided the same. And that learning curve was huge. Um, how many different platforms did we try? At least four. At least four. Wow. Okay. It all bombed. And then we were so blessed. Somebody, you know, and I spent, I think the their first episode, like our pilot, 
I spent a good three days editing that. It was I awful. Still remember. Like, I can't, and that's not even counting all the video tutorials I watched on how to splice and dice and edit and balance with Audacity. And then as luck would have it, you know, I mean, we're a faith-based podcast, so we just feel like there was divine intervention. There was somebody in my community that I've literally known for a decade and had no idea he was a Peabody Emmy winning producer. Whoa. <laughs> and okay. he happened to have time and said, oh, I know how to do that. And he did it in like 10 minutes. I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, I hey, hate you. But he's been a godsend. Joe Balian um, is our audio engineer and producer. And he's just, that was one of the biggest hurdles. And so now whenever we have a tech issue, he's the one that takes care of it and does the research and tells us what's going to work and what's not. Wow. What a resource. <laughs> yes. We're really, really blessed. He's just the nice guy that always has a video camera everywhere. And I know he works in TV. But what does he know about podcasts? Oh, it turns out a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at your guys's website, obviously, you know, in my research for getting ready for this interview. First of all, I'm going to acknowledge you for putting together a solid, solid website. Thank um, you. Yay, my, Saba. Yeah, that's Thank my you. background. I'm learning about podcasting, but I know a lot about websites. Yay. That's like the biggest compliment because wow. that's like Uzma does the, the production stuff and that's I do like the marketing branding stuff. So I appreciate it when when an expert is telling me that it's good. I appreciate that. You need to have that one domain that you can just say if yes. somebody asks you about your podcast and you have two seconds to tell them where to find <laughs> yes. more information about you you know that's it right there it has, you can you're, just you're say like your this domain. is it go there it's everything that you can possibly need yeah. to know about mommy well muslim is on our pod uh, on yeah. our website i mean first of all it looks great second of all you have really good content on there um the the, the content is you know conducive to your show obviously but what I noticed was on the team page, I think you have a big team underneath you. So yes. I was curious about how that team functions, you know, in relationship to your podcast. I'm going to let Zepa carry that. I think I've talked about Joe enough. No, I know. So there, we have been blessed in our journey to attract amazing people. Amazing. I mean, and that is just a godsend for us. This is not us reaching out to other people. It's people coming to us at times and places when we need it. Like I, I, I fundamentally believe in <laughs> divine intervention. Obviously we have a religious podcast, but like, I'll give you a, the most recent example. We have been tasked um, recently uh, to do a lot of online events, event branding for a couple of different sponsors that wants that want us to, to participate. Wow. Um, event marketing is our, our, my, my background specifically, but I'm also getting my master's and I'm homeschooling two kids and I have two other kids at home. And it's just, you know, so I was like, I don't want to lose these opportunities, but I also, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to fit this in. Literally that day, somebody texted me and she was like, I love your podcast. Um, you know, I just want to do something meaningful in my life. Is there anything that I can help you guys with? And she happens to have an event marketing background. <laughs> and I was like, you are not going to believe this. And she was like, girl, I will take that off your plate. And she did within the day. So I, I believe in wow. good intentions, um, paying it forward. We're a big believer that when something good happens to us, we'd love to pay it forward to other people. Um, and I feel like that's, been like good juju for us because we have I, both of us have really good intentions it's not about the two of us it's about how can we can use and elevate our platform to help other people and because we're doing that i think it just attracts amazing people to our team so every single person that is on that website believe it or not is a volunteer person who who volunteers their time effort energy just because they believe in our miss mission and they want to support us. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's fantastic. And it's it's clear from listening to your podcast and looking at your website, I mean, you're making a positive impact on the world uh, and that it attracts like-minded people. And so mm -hmm. not a surprise that, you know, you Aww. are attracting those people, but there's a lot to be said about allowing yourself to let those people in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, is there any... I don't know, maybe I'm being dramatic here, but, <laughs> but, you know, is there any, um, you know, like, do you feel vulnerable around that or, or any trust or issues around it? I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching there. Is there any, you know, kind of challenges around having such a big team of people underneath you? 
I'll let it was my answer to this because she's always, you know, this is that's her baby. That's her question. <laughs> that's her. Well, no, I think both of us, our personalities are very much alike. Our brother is the firstborn. Uh, we yeah. were both like these experimental children. And a lot of what we do is everything ourselves. Like we're used to that. You know, we yeah. like to be in control. We like to be in charge and nobody else can do it right except for us. But like Zeba said, we have our hands uh, in so many things and wear so many different hats if we wanted to contain uh, continuing this podcast in a way that served our target audience and the accidental audiences we've acquired along the way, thankfully, and if we wanted it to make the impact that we did, we really needed to trust other people. And that ability to delegate, I, it requires releasing some of that ego, right? And mm-hmm. uh, acknowledging that there's no such thing as doing it all. Like that's a law um, and you don't have to. Yeah. And how can you reach other people and connect with other people if you stay an island? Like that just doesn't happen. So do you feel like when you brought some more people under your, you know, some more people on your team, do you feel like the podcast itself started to kind of take a life on of its own? You know, with more people you brought on, the kind of, you know, the, the kind of juices started to flow and it started to evolve into something that was maybe unexpected. I think so. I think we could do more, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and we could start like our content. Um imagining the content rather than getting into the nitty gritty. Because when people pick mm-hmm. up the hard parts of the, um, what is your workflow? Yeah. Um, then you can focus on the content, which I think is really important. I don't th- I know what you think, Seba. No, I agree. It, it allows Uzma and I to be creative, right? Because um, we're not worried about, oh my God, we didn't splice this perfectly and it went here and now we have a sponsor, but like, where are we going to add that sponsor and how are we going to do that? It allows us to be like, oh my God, I, I heard the story of this person. I'm going to spend that time and energy and effort to reach out to that person, cultivate that relationship so that we can bring her on the show. So it, it allowed the two of us the opportunity to be because we, of course, are very different and we have different skill sets, but it allowed us to actually participate in ways that were probably the most meaningful than for us to worry about, you know, I like Uzma, like you forgot to put that one thing on the website. Yeah, well, because I'm doing that, I'll take care of it. And that's my passion and, and that and it's easier for me to do. So it allowed us to each do our own individual things that we were meant to do. Yeah, I mean, you guys are functioning as a team from end to end, top to bottom, and that's you know you're harnessing that power of a team as you should um, for the benefit of not only your podcast and yourselves, but for the community that you're representing and just the world at large. You know, these you know, kids that are even growing up too. You know, not just in your family, but in the families that you are communicating with as well. So, you know, this is a it's a big deal what you guys are up to. You know, it's not something that's I mean, I don't want to make light of anybody's, you know, what people are up to big things that I've spoken with on the show. And, you know, you guys are included in that. So thank you. you. It's very admirable and it's very inspirational as well. I appreciate it. So I kind of, you know, I, my initial question was a little bit on the negative side, you know, talking about, you know, the challenges that you're running into. I'm, I'm curious about, you know, like the successes that you've experienced as a result of your podcast. You have any highlights there? Statistics wise, well, I have stats. I yeah, do stats. I, mean. yeah, I was going to say stat person. Like, if you want stats, I look at the analytics you. of everything. Um, but you know, analytics obviously is just one part of what success looks like, and it's literally what is your definition. So, like on paper, we have over twenty five thousand downloads. We have over a hundred episodes. This is technically our third season, so our third year has started. Our seasons are fifty two episodes, mm-hmm. um, so full year, um, and uh i think that is huge that we're in six continents primarily the united states completely targeting our demographic that we aim for and it is now expanding we started 18 to 34 year old women and now it's 18 to 44 year old women so that's great because that's our thing mm-hmm. it's finally in there we're finally reaching us moms like us so that to us is so successful and just the fact that we can collaborate with people like you Mm -hmm. um hearing about us finding out about us getting our message across and saying we're here we're here um those relationships i think are uh, a measure of our success just as much as our analytics i want to talk to you guys about how it is to you know co-host the podcast how you know obviously you guys have grown up with each other I guess what I'm really curious about is, is for anybody who is 
thinking about co-hosting a podcast with, you know, even friends or family, what kind of advice would you give them in ter- you know, to help make them successful with that? So can I, can I talk about how we had some bumps in the road in mm-hmm. the beginning? <laughs> I'm hoping you will, please. <laughs> so, it, you know, for, and we're going to keep it real. You know, Ozan yeah. and I obviously are friends and we're friends first, but the reality of the two, uh, situation is we're two very different people, have ve- two very different viewpoints on a lot of things. Um, Ozma is like left brain. Uh, she is a very much like, I'm going to go get that, do that. And I'm kind of like, wait, it has to look good and feel <laughs> good and blah, 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 which I think once we decided and embrace the fact that we are different, I feel like at that point it it went well. It went better. But the, we had very frank because this was such a like, I'm going to get you and let me explain to you my facts and my this and the that. And and I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't want it to be like this political thing because that's not, you know, I want it to be about love and blah, 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 you know. <laughs> and so our compromise was as my gets her soapbox. She gets to talk about talk about it. Keep it real. Um you know, get to the nitty gritty of the things that she wants to talk about. And I could talk about my woo woo stuff and like introspection and spirituality and, you know, let's meditate. And I know she's rolling her eyes when I'm I talking know. about that, but the truth of the matter is like, we both bring a very different perspective. So you have to one respect the fact that the other person is different. That is why you'll make a great co-host, right? Because if you had two people saying exactly the same thing, how boring would that podcast that episode be the fact that we do think differently um you know and come and approach things differently i think is what allows us to have the chemistry that we have because we respect each other's differences Mm -hmm. um but but in the beginning we had some tense moments and we had to have some very frank open, honest conversations. Like I flat out was like, I don't like that. I don't like how it goes. And I don't, and I think that God was listening because it speaking, going back to the divine, because all those episodes ended up being getting like trashed or lost or <laughs> like, in the the, so I was like, see, I was right. We're, it wasn't supposed to be like that, you know? And, um, and just embracing that, you know, things happen. Like we drop the ball, we're moms we're crazy and allowing the other person the opportunity to be human because she's her thing she like i don't even know half of what she's doing and she doesn't know half of what i'm doing but we we managed to make it work because i'm not going to micromanage another adult so kind of being a flexible open and very frank and honest in our conversations with each other in the very beginning whether we liked to hear it or not and there were times where i was like i don't like the tone or she'd be like i don't like your tone um, and, and being open, being like, okay, let me rephrase that. Let me go back to the drawing board. Um, and then I feel like when you get the tough stuff out of the way, it's just easier after that. Yeah. And set your boundaries, you know, yeah, like, you're setting your boundaries. I'm like, yeah. Zeba, I don't even care. Just make yeah. the magic happen. That's your real house. Yeah. I don't need to be CC'd. I don't need to know. Just tell yeah. me where I need, what I need to do. <laughs> exactly. You know, because I'm not going to inundate your inbox. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I just want you to know what I'm doing. It's like, don't care. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't care. Then I stopped. I was like, okay, just show up to this. But, and, and that's what we had to do too. Like from a sure. practical, if you're asking from a practical, like scheduling perspective, we're like Mondays and Fridays, we have, again, creating those boundaries. Uzma's off. I'm off. I'm like, and we will, from two to five, we will go ahead and leave those things open for mommy while Muslim. Cause the other times we're both doing different things. If, if she's trying to schedule something for me on a Tuesday, I'm just going to be like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Like, unless it's an app, absolutely like mandatory emergency. emergency thing, but we've had to create our own boundaries because we're both moms first. I mean, that's why we're doing the right. podcast. Um, and you know, my kids know that when I, on Fridays I'm recording, I'm doing those types of things. And then I go home and then I can be a hundred percent focused on them. So I think in creating those boundaries, having a good scheduling system and having frank and open conversations from the beginning will allow you to have a successful co-host partnership. Yeah, I'm definitely getting, you know, the communication aspect of it mm-hmm. as being critical, but also something that I picked up on too. And you 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 nutshelled it, but I'm gonna just say it back again the way that I was understanding it. But really identifying your co host's strengths mm-hmm. and weaknesses and being okay with it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, you know, I'm a numbers person. 
I'm the emotional person. Mm -hmm. How can we make that work? You know, try to pinpoint that like right off the bat so that you're not you know, stepping on each other along the way. I mean, it's easy for me to say because I'm not a co-host, you know, so. Right, or annoying people, like the biggest thing, like I would have to say are the show notes, okay? <laughs> Ozma spends so much time, energy, effort, writing it, I mean, beautifully written. And I mean, and I love that she does that. And I was like, and I'm like, I'm just not going to look at them till the morning of. That's, I just can't do it. And it drives her nuts, but I know she needs to write them. Yes. It's for to me. To feel good. Yeah. It's for her. Yeah. And I have just, I pretend I look at them. <laughs> Once in a while, I'll write something down, like a yes, smiley face or something. I do so that she feels like I'm looking at them. But honestly, I just have to wing it because that's just more of who. I am, um, but it, that was a book, like she would get really frustrated. Like, are you not looking at, no, I'm actually not. <laughs> and I'm just not going to. And she finally had to just be like, okay, fine. It's kind of like, oh, can I we have, have this guest in April? I'm like, no, we're booked for April. We're booked exactly. through June. We can't. And she'll be like, <laughs> and I'm like, didn't you look at the spreadsheet? <laughs> and I'm like, nope. Didn't look. <laughs> no, I did not look at the spreadsheet. Yeah. So we all have our strengths and weaknesses. So speaking of, wow, you guys are booked until, did you say until uh, June, through April uh, into June? 2021. June okay. 2021, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was in 2020 there for a moment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was like, like, 20, 21. Wow. That's so far ahead. Wait a minute. No, no. we're in that year. We're in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I slept through 2020. <laughs> yeah. Most of us did. Don't yeah, worry. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I listened to an episode that I think it's the most recent one, not Netflix, Auntie. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like I said, I mean, your, your guys' chemistry, it, it's so great. And I, I, you know, like knowing now what you guys just shared about, you know, the, the <laughs> frankness that you have with the co-hosting um, makes a lot of sense, you know, and it works too. You know, what I love about it and, you know, in hindsight, I'm, I'm actually realizing like the perspective that your pers different perspectives bring is one of the really nice things about the show. You don't look at things the same way and you, you know, kind of attack things in a different way. And that's, that's, it's cool to see that in a show. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it works very well. I was curious about how you guys go about getting your guests. How do you reach out to people? What does that look like? It's good old fashioned stalking. Okay. Yeah. You see something, mm -hmm. you like it, and you, go figure out how to get her. Uh -huh. um, so one of the guests that we had this year, I mean, I've been literally trying to get her on since like early 2019. <laughs> That's right. And even in the pandemic, I couldn't get her. And I was like, girl, like you're <laughs> grounded. Like I know you're here. <laughs> but, you know, she finally was like, you were so persistent. I just had to come on because you wouldn't leave my husband alone. Cause I even went after her husband. <laughs> I was like, I will get you on. Um, but you know, it's like, you don't want to be like scary stalkery. Like you don't want somebody to file a police report, but send, you know, it's, it's a good idea to, if it's somebody you really want, like every three months, every six months, at least every six months, you want to be following up in some kind of an email. If you somehow accidentally found their number or like text them um, and say, Hey, like, this is my number. Call me anytime, make yourself available. You know? Um, and what we do is we do provide um, in those cold call letters, e emails that we're sending, we're sending a copy, uh, the link to the website. We're sending a link to the latest episode. Um, our press kit is on our website. We'll even make it easy. We won't even make you click on the website. Here's a link directly to the page to our press kit um, so that they know that we're legitimate and that we're not in it for anything. Um, other than getting their message out and getting mm -hmm. their uh, persona and their gifts out to the world so people can see the amazing things they're doing or even the hard things that they're doing and how we can do them or how we can address them um, and, and sell like what you're doing is important and people deserve to know it. Yeah. Um, in a few instances, we've had people call us because we do have a form on our website. So they'll um, message us and say, I have such and such to talk about. Would you have me on? So, but that's more rare. We have to do a lot of the legwork. And it is, again, developing that relationship, that virtual relationship at first until they finally break and say, oh my God, you're so annoying and you're not going away. <laughs> um, be persistent. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I want to go back to something that we were talking about before about how critical the website is functioning in that mm -hmm. interaction mm -hmm. there, you know, it lends credibility. You have a press kit that they can, you know, go to and see, I mean, that's really powerful, you know, and it breaks down those, you know, those 
walls of hesitation that somebody may have for going on to your podcast, you know, mm-hmm. especially at the level that you guys are, you know, performing as well, right? Like you're bringing on guests that are also making an impact on the life, on, right. on the world as well. And so um, it's critical that you're able to get those guests on, you know. Um, so again, the website, you know, <laughs> is functioning very, very important. powerfully. Yes. Yeah. I did not understand why we needed a, a website. That was the like, brainchild. Well, we she said, we have to have like, one. I was like, why? We're podcasters. I did not get it. So. Uh, no, but but in fairness, she's being kind with me about that. But she's the one who gets the guests. I don't even know who's going to be on till the day before, <laughs> um, which again drives her nuts. And uh, But I, I really appreciate that because I'm just not on social media and stuff. So like it just it's harder for me. Like I said, she's an expert in all things Muslim. So she knows the who, what, where, when and why. And so I definitely appreciate that. So she says we in a, in a nice way, but it's really her. Well, I mean, it's, it's a team again, right? Like you have mm-hmm. put together this tool that Usma can use, you yeah. know, like she literally, it's a set of tools that she can mm-hmm. use. And, and that's really kind of my point with the website and how it relates to a podcast, you know, and how it can function in terms of attracting not only guests, but even an audience as well, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, you want to have that kind of air of like, yeah, you know, like, we're going after it here, you know, yeah. and we're making this difference or, or whatever it is that your, you know, your podcast might be about. What is one piece of advice? And I want both of you to actually answer this because you both have different perspective. But what is the one piece of advice that you would give somebody who is interested in starting a podcast or who is just getting started out? No, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, however hard you think, well, first of all, if you think a podcast is easy, stop. And just don't do it. But if you think a podcast will be reasonably difficult, um, like any new endeavor, um, take whatever your like if you numbered it from one to ten on level of difficulty, take your number and multiply it by ten. Because it really is this rabbit hole. Um, and I think it's because again, Zeba and my personality is similar in that when we want to do something, we want to do it so well. And so like, we want to make such an impact that there's always room for improvement. There's always something you can do better. And then we have another perfectionist on our team, Joe Bailey and our producer, who's like, oh, but there's this new tech, like now you're going to live stream. And we're like, no, <laughs> that means we have to brush our hair and I have to cover my hair. We have to wear makeup on a video. Like we like our yoga pants, leave us alone. <laughs> um, but he made us go on video. He's like, nope, this is the new wave. This is what podcasts are doing. You will do it. Um, so be willing to make it better and better and more you know, your podcast is nothing if it's in a vacuum, right? Like you want to get that audience and explore every single way that you're going to do that, uh, discover that. As much as she hates social media, Zeba got on Clubhouse today and we did our first video live stream and did it at the same time on Clubhouse. And it was amazing, you know, just to be willing to try to experiment and multiply whatever you think it's going to take by 10, then you're going to do really well. That would be my advice to have a realistic expectation of what this is going to look like. Zeba. Everything she says is, is spot on. And what I would add to that is um, plan to be consistent. Yes. Right. Like if you're going to do it, if you want to avoid that concept of pod fade or whatever the case, I think that's the word, that's the terminology, terminology to use is to be consistent. Like if you are building an audience, right? You're building that credibility with that audience. So if you're saying I'm going to be out every Thursday at six and it's Friday at two or it's Saturday at one, or is it, you know, you will lose whatever momentum, whatever audience that you have built up because they're not going to trust you anymore. So that is the beauty of surrounding yourself with a team of people because Joe will make sure that that like Uzma does the editing, Joe makes sure that it's up. um, And we are pretty consistent with that. And as far as like from a marketing perspective, if you're trying to say like how to, to, to be able to market your podcast is start going into, let's say you're, we're, parenting you know we will go into mom groups and chit chat and if something is relevant we'll go ahead and post a link to something like I was on like she said on clubhouse and they were talking about a particular author that I'm like oh by the way we were we interviewed this author and wow. this is kind of what she was saying and perhaps you should go and look, look and guess what that's what they'll do so you know those are the different ways that you know from a subtle because neither one of us like to talk about our, ourselves as we're talking about ourselves. <laughs> um, but what we do do is, you know, if I feel like it is going to um, 
be a beneficial for you and it's organic, then I'll go ahead and, and place it. But I'm not going to post something for the sake of posting something. So be mindful of that. Join a couple of different groups. You know, learn about the new tech that's coming out. Like Uzma was like, we're doing this clubhouse thing and this is how we're going to do it. And I thought it was bizarro, but we did it. And it was an amazing experiment. Like, again, being that, that being flexible to learn different things. You know, we're in our 40s now. So I felt it feels like a little bit, you know, I had to learn a whole new um, area of like social media and all this fun stuff and, and being mindful that there's, you know, there's always an easier, better way to do things and, and, and allowing yourself the opportunity to, to find them. So I do, I want to ask you another question, both of you too, you know, to, if you could both answer this question as well, but Uzma, I'll start with you. What, what do you want people to get out of listening to your podcast? Why should they listen to your show? For validation. Um, Because I think for our particular community, our concern was that they, like us, you know, it's like this unspoken um, pain that a lot of young moms especially go through, like early in their motherhood years, where you feel like you're the only one who's going through this stuff, but you're too ashamed to ask because there's so many expectations that are placed on the mom community, regardless of what your faith is or what your culture is. Um, There's so much pressure to be Donna Reed and, you know... um, Jane Fonda, you know, back in the 80s, but also now, because, oh my God, she looks incredible. She's hot. Bill, Bill, I want to look like her. Um, Like Jane Fonda, Donna Reed, Lucille Ball, like Cindy Crawford, all rolled up into one, you know? And it's it's a complete lie. And it takes until you're 40 to realize that. Mm -hmm. Or it takes like three or four kids to realize like, oh, there was no manual. And all of that was a lie. And I wasn't alone and everybody was going through it. Like, I think my son, my firstborn was three months old when I vocalized at a dinner party. Like, I don't even like him. I'm only taking care (laughs) of him so I don't go to hell. Like, I really don't like this little bug. (laughs) And somebody pulled me aside and she said, you shouldn't say that out loud to people. uh, Because, you know, they're going to think that you're an abusive mom. And that was exactly why I had been so quiet for so long. And I was like, no, I'm not an abusive mom. I'm doing everything right. But I really hate him. Like, how do, who do I talk to about this? And so I want people to feel validated. You don't always love your kids and that's okay, you know, because you're a human being and they're human beings and nobody's perfect. And we are your community of like-minded people who, well, I'm, I'm the half that doesn't like kids all the time. Zeba is a really (laughs) maternal nurturing person. I'm the one that like, you know, regularly called my kids expletives because I was like those little, you know, what, um, because I was just so fed up. Um, And I want moms to know that it's okay. You don't have to be that rolled up ball of fantasy. You are a fantasy just on your own, regardless of how you raise your kids, you're doing it right. You have been, you are the perfect mom chosen for those perfect children, regardless of what you call them. Amen to that. But yeah, but that, that is funny because that is how we drift. Because even when my, my teenagers are being so grumpy, I still will sneak into their room at night and look at them and be like, oh my God, you're so I love cute. You. I love you so much. And they're like, mom, you're such a creep. Get out of here. Um, but I love you too. So no, it, it, it really is that. Like our, we wanted to provide a platform for women and, and, and to back up. We, when we first started the podcast and was my stupid idea to be like, oh my God, like and this is what's going to happen and 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 again i feel like uh the divine intervened because we literally all the big names people we hit we lost audio we there was a corrupted file there was a this there was a this to the point where both of us sat down and we're like is god trying to tell us not to do this because it doesn't make sense we've literally lost every single one of these things and then we realized you know maybe it's not about the bigger named people maybe it's about elevating the voices of the everyday mom and they're just as valuable they're just they have some we can learn from them they're, they they have an impact and once we changed the directive again going back to being flexible that's when we started having success. And I think it was part of part of what we wanted to do is like, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be, we're all in the trenches. Guess what? Our kids are all, you know, pooping out of their diapers and, you know, running around and asking, you know, we have those potty moments. I remember as we were literally interviewing the first American Muslim female general in the United yeah. States army. 
And my son was screaming in the background, mama, come clean, clean, come wash my butt in the middle of this conversation. And guess what? She started laughing. She goes, I had to clean my kid's butt too. So that's the point. It's like, it's that commonality. um, And you don't need to be these big name people. So that was for my thing is like, we, we changed the direction and in changing the direction to kind of focus on the quote unquote everyday mom um, and their struggles and challenges and, and, and their blessings that we were able to get traction. So I, I thought that that was kind of um, a very eye-opening experience for me. All right, let's get into a time machine here. You guys have been going for two years now. Let's go two years into the future. Ooh. What are your hopes for your podcast? Oh man, yeah, I told I know, you we dream big. We're yes, all about I, go I, big I or go home. Has, yes. Yeah, but I, I want everybody in mainstream media to look at mommy one Muslim and say, if we want the Muslim American perspective about parenting and motherhood, those are the two we want to talk to. Those are the two we want writing. Those are the two, you know, um, mom experts in the country. And, you know, I don't have any imposter syndrome about being a mom expert because I am a mom expert in my children. Um, what I'm really a mom expert in is the experience of having been born and raised in this country and seeing what happened to my country pre and post 9-11 and the way I grew up versus the way my kids grew up. And guess what we found out in the podcast is that it's not very different for anybody regardless of your faith. Um, and, you know, I just... I, I think we can win a Nobel Peace Prize. Like, I'm going to put it out there, universe. Like, we're going to bring moms together from all walks of life, from all faiths and creeds, and they're all going to say, oh, my God, like, you brought peace to the world. That is what I think Mommy and One Muslim is going to do. Maybe not in two years, maybe four. World peace will take four years. From from her mouth to God's ears, because I, I mean, 100%, I mean, I, I would love that. Um, from a more realistic perspective, <laughs> I would I would like to say you're the woo woo really, girl. Come on, I know that's the weird thing. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I would like to say if she's right. Like uh, you know, not necessarily with uh, just the two of us, but I would like for people in quote unquote mainstream media to come to us if they want to get a point of view from the American Muslim mom perspective, and we can tap whether it's the two of us, whether it's one of our lovely guests that we come on, we do want to be that, that conduit to um, a greater understanding. And, and we are doing it. We are setting the platform for that. We, you know, we are um, in the process of collaborating with uh, some writers to, to write a book called mommy while Muslim with different types of, it's an anthological type of um, book series where we're going to write and elevate the voices of American Muslim mothers in in written form because I think that that's very important if we can get that into mainstream media as well Um, so so in two years I think we can have a couple of books published by God's grace um, perhaps you know a television studio where you know we're kind of creating some of those things Um, but the reality of the situation is what I am really focusing on and I know as much too is to raise really good kids so that they are the future of America. And if we can create a world that is open and receptive to them, that's, that's even better. One more question before we wrap things up for both of you and say, I'll start with you. What is the best thing that's happened to you as a result of the podcast? Hmm. Honestly, because there's so many amazing things so I, I feel badly just even naming one, but what I will say, you know, cause we've have great things where we have amazing partnerships coming up. Um, we're actually just got tapped to be the St. Jude brand ambassadors for um, their Muslim Ramadan campaign. We have, you know, a domestic violence um, a campaign coming up with Lisa. Lowe. We have a lot of things on the calendar, but I would, I would say that the best thing for me personally um, is when my kids make fun of me um, and then and because they listen to the podcast. So they'll be like, this is Sabah Hassan with Mami Wa Muslim and they'll walk around and they'll say that in the house. And, you know, I think contrary to what people would think that that would be annoying, but I'm just like, you know, they're listening. I'm leaving behind that if my physical body isn't, I'm leaving behind an auditory message to my children, to my children's children, that they knew I did what I could to help 
make the world just a little bit better for them. Oh my God. Are you trying to make us cry? Holy oh, crap. sorry. Oh, but that's yeah. really what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I love it. Um, I think the best thing that's happened is, Ooh, it's kind of tied between the relationships that we get to make with mm-hmm. complete strangers. You know, yeah. people who were strangers are like, now I feel like almost our, our blood brothers and blood sisters. Yeah. Cause we have a couple of evangelical dads who are like our <laughs> biggest cheerleaders. And we're like, <laughs> Oh my so gosh, cute. this is so amazing. Um, yeah. So every time we see them, we're like, bro, um, <laughs> we love it. Um, and obviously all the women that come onto our show, you know, yeah. um, I wish we had um, more frequent conversation with them, but you know, sadly they're super busy. Um, as we are. Um, And then of course, with the audience members, like the feedback that we get from them, um, there's good and bad, right? Because it's an ego booster. And so you have to reel yourself back and be like, no, Mm -hmm. I'm really not that awesome. But no, maybe I am, you know? (laughs) You got to own that. Yeah, right. Like, and being women, that's really hard to do. Um, So we've had this, I think, uh, a metamorphosis with ourselves, because now, you know, Zeba's underselling herself. Uh, I think one of the best things that's happened with this is she's empowered to go back to school and get her master's mm-hmm. and do all these amazing certifications and stuff. I'm feeling like I find like somebody's finally listening. Like I had all these gifts that I didn't know how to put them in places. And the podcast gave me that. Like I'm great with spreadsheets and organization. It's like, yeah, I, I guess she is. Now, you know, <laughs> so I don't get to do that at work as much, but you know, I'm taking all of that and channeling it here. So it's between the relationships and utilizing our skill sets, our untapped skill sets, yeah. putting them in one place together that I think is the greatest gift that the podcast gave me. Tell us where people can find out more about both of you and your podcast. Yeah. Well, you've hyped up the website really well. <laughs> yes. And I appreciate now, now that. I'm, now I'm feeling bad because I'm like, <laughs> kind of a stupid they, question like, after all that. that. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I think that's the start of some, you know, a beautiful relationship with hopefully whoever visits it. So we're at mommingwellmuslim.com. Um, on Instagram, we're at mommingwellmuslim podcast. So it's all one word. And on Facebook, we're mommying while Muslim. And I know it's a little bit hard. It's M O M M Y I N G. We made a word. Like we get to make words because that's what moms mm-hmm. do all the time. Um, so you can find us on Facebook. Our Facebook group is really active. And on Clubhouse, you can find us at you, Joffrey, too, and at Zeba Hassan. Um, and we're hosting regular rooms now and going to be live streaming on it, it looks like. so. Uzma and Zeba, thank you so much for coming on the show. I would love to keep in touch with you guys. I know yes. you're exploding right now, um, but you know, maybe six oh. months down the road, we can maybe catch up. Maybe not exploding, we're exploding, stalk us. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll just continue to stalk you guys. Yeah, for <laughs> exactly. you and do another follow-up interview, eh? <laughs> Absolutely, we'd love to do that. <laughs> the name of the show is Mommying While Muslim. Uzma and Seba, thank you so much for coming on. It was it was such a treat. I realize, you know, we're running over, but I wanted to just, you know, enjoy this conversation while I had you on. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. We had fun. It's always fun. I mean, she says we don't like talking about ourselves. I don't have that problem. I'll talk about <laughs> I'm a podcaster. Yeah. I can talk until the cows come home. So. <laughs> Thanks again. I wish you both the best of success in the future. I know it's going to happen. You're making it happen, actually. So oh, yeah. thank Thanks you. so much, James. From your mouth thank to you, God's James. ears, like Zepa says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Don't hang up. Oh, don't hang up. <laughs> Thanks again to Uzma and Zeba. Check the show notes for links to learn more about Uzma and Zeba and their show, Mommying While Muslim Podcast. Please share what you got out of my conversation by leaving a review on podchaser.com. You can find out how to do this in the show notes. And do let me know what you need from me to make this show even better for you. And make sure you follow Podcast Tactics to keep learning more about podcasting in future episodes. Thank you.